<laughs> All right. Um, if you wonder why I'm a bit loud, no, sorry. Um, I do have to almost scream to get this out because that's pretty darn loud. Well, the process by which we learned that I had to speak at this level of volume, that's operant conditioning. All right, so we're going to start off with understanding a little bit about operant behavior. It's different than respondent behavior, as you might imagine. And boy, you can really hear the, the fact that I'm yelling. All right, um, so operant behavior is really straightforward, folks. It's the voluntary responses that you do. It's your words, it's your actions, it's everything you do that is not a reflex. So that is the reflex of stuff is the respondent behavior. We're talking about operant. We're talking about the stuff that operates on the environment, the behavior that you do that has an effect in the world around you, all right? Um, so remember, behavior had to do with an interaction between the organism and the environment, all right? That interaction produces change in the world, right? All sorts of ways, right? Maybe it's just a sound wave that's bouncing around off of things, but it produces that change. So that is why it becomes operant. We'll get to more, and then in turn, the behavior, or the environment in turn operates on your behavior, right? It selects for behavior, right? Which gets me into another difference between respondent and operant conditioning. One is selected for and one is, right? What do I mean by that, right? It's really simple. Right? In respondent conditioning, a stimulus elicits a response. It pulls that reflex out of you. The power is on the stimulus. In operant conditioning, the power is on the consequence, which is also a stimulus, but the power is there. So an organism emits a response in operant conditioning, then the environment selects for it. It says, we can keep this one, or we can put this one in the trash. Right? If I talk to you at a normal level, you wouldn't be able to hear me right now. Right? So the environment is saying, your behavior's not gonna function here, which leads me to another point. Right? Behavior in an operant world is about function, not about topography. It's not about how a behavior looks. Right? It's about how a behavior functions. Can it function well enough in the environment to produce a change, to, 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 what, what effect does it have, right? Does that affect something that keeps it going, or does that affect something that reduces it? I don't know, but that effect is what has the power over the behavior. It shapes it, it, uh, it strengthens it for reinforcement, it punishes it, it decreases it through punishment, sorry. Uh, let's see, what else do we talk about? Oh, probably talk about two really important things, and for this, we're gonna, just bear with me, because this is a pretty complex topic. We're going to do a brief overview in this video, but later we're going to come back in and go in itty bitty detail over the paper that I'm referring to. The paper that I'm referring to is The Phylogeny and Ontogeny of Behavior, written by Skinner. Okay, Brilliant, brilliant paper, but the point that I want you to understand is this distinction between phylogenic responses and uh, ontogenic responses. So phylogenic responses are the stuff that came about through through natural selection, through the history, right? So through genetics, okay? So phylogeny is what you're prepared to do through the genetics. Ontogeny is what you've learned throughout your lifetime. The things, that, the behaviors that you engage in. Specifically, I'm gonna focus only right now on operant responses as, as far as the ontogenic piece. So, so this ontogeny, that's the stuff you learn throughout your lifetime. Why do we put it together with natural selection? It's because it's a different type of selection. It's not the same thing as Darwinian selection, but it's similar. It's on a different level. Behavior functions, and then as that behavior continues, it will either, uh, sorry, that behavior has an effect on the environment, it will either continue, and it'll increase maybe, or it'll decrease, right? Because the environment is doing the selecting, we call it selection by consequences. So your behavior is modified based on its function in the world, right? That, in itself is freaking life-changing once you understand that. That's amazing, right? So what Skinner stumbled upon and wrote about was this different level of selection that's different than, um, than Darwin's natural selection, and it happens within our lifetime. It's the ex your experiences and the behavior that changes. So as we talk about operant responding and operant behavior, I want you to realize voluntary. I want you to think about emitted. I want you to think about selection by consequences. And that gets us set up for understanding all the details of operant behavior. So anyway, we'll come back, we'll see you again, and maybe we'll be in a different location. So I don't have to yell as much. All right, see ya.